Hello, welcome to a let's play for Matrix Games and I think it's Age Yard, Age Yard, um, English Civil War, Blast from the Past. It came out, um, I think, seven or eight years ago. And I'm going to be playing a let's play of the Royalist Naseby campaign. So the Royalists start in a bad way. Um, after Naseby, they are short on resources and men. So just thought we'd do a short let's play and see if we can turn the tide or, or last a bit longer than Charles did in real life. So let's jump straight in. And let's have a look at the situation to start off with. So the, let's see what they say here. So the situation is critical. After the defeat last year in Marston Moor, our cause became weaker. The King's army is at Leicester. The main enemy army is at Northampton under, under Fairfax's command. We have some of our cities under siege, Carlisle in the north, Basing House, and Winchester in the south. Its loss would be bad news for us. In Scotland, after a year of success, Montrose is facing a new enemy army under Bailey. We need a victory soon if we want to change things. So let's just see what the situation is in the kingdom as it stands. First of all, let's just have a look at who owns what. So we have been basically pushed into Wales and the southwest of England. We have some holdings still in the Midlands. And then we have an army in Scotland under Montrose, who is currently up here in the Highlands. And he is facing uh, a, a large parliamentarian or well, Scottish army under, under Bailey. So we'll try and keep him alive and see if we can wreak havoc. Let's have a look. Let's turn that off um, elsewhere. Let's see what we have. We have Carlisle. And it's currently under siege. We have a small garrison there under Glenham. Currently being besieged. We hold Lancaster. Have a small force there under Derby. Liverpool. Chester. We've got a small force. Well, reasonable size force under Byron. And main army for the king is here at Leicester facing the main parliamentary army under Fairfax down at Northampton. So historically, I think the king marched south and uh, was defeated at the Battle of Naseby. We will try and keep our king's forces intact. He has quite a lot of troops here and um, got quite a, a lot of cavalry there. So we'll try and keep him in place if we can. Uh, we hold most of Wales. We don't really hold anything in the, the southeast and in the southwest. We're besieging Plymouth with a force under Grenville. And our second main army really is here under Goring. And he's currently besieging Taunton. Um, so the problem we have as the Royalists is we don't have a lot of... We, we've got decent money coming in, but we don't have a lot of um, war supplies. And we need war supplies to both replenish and recruit new units. So we are currently holding, I think Oxford and Hereford have some. Let's have a look in Hereford. Uh, we have iron industry, which outputs some money and war supply. And then our capital of Oxford uh, as well, which has a depot and yeah, an arms manufacturer there. And we can't see our, our increase per turn until the next turn yet. Um, so most of our units are inactive on the first turn here. Uh, most of them you'll see that they're, they're, they're currently locked. They become available as we, we move through time. We've only really got King's Army, a uh, small force here on the Herbert, and this force here to play with. But we'll start with looking at our decisions. And at this point in, in time, a lot of the country is kind of irretrievably against us. Um, so when it comes to gaining support, oh, I think Bristol actually has some industry as well. Let's have a look. Uh, yeah, it's got a trade port, so that gives us some war supply as well, uh, in, in addition to normal supply and, and normal ammo. So I think we'll plan will be keep hold of Bristol at all costs, take Taunton if we can, and try and take some cities to kind of build up our strength and supplies 
try and avoid losing Chester and uh, Worcester as well. But we'll try and keep out. I don't think we can beat Fairfax's army at this point, so we'll have to try and keep our main force alive and in supply, and then hopefully we can meet up with Lord Goring. So decision-wise, uh, we're going to try and break the blockade uh, in the Bristol Channel. This will give us, if you have a look, if we succeed, it costs us a little bit of money and some um, engagement points, and it will give us five war supply if successful. And then in terms of other decisions, what's the support in Bristol? So I'm going to increase support in Bristol as well. Um, we are over 50%, but parliamentarians, uh, we definitely don't want them taking that. Um, and then we'll probably build some defensive works at Leicester. We'll hang around at Leicester. I think we probably might need to be able to put supplies right at the end here. We've got a couple of supply wagons. Um, I'm not great at this game or any of these games really on, on supply. I um, tend to <laughs> run out of supply and then my main army kind of just gets whittled away. Um, so we'll try and avoid that. In terms of production, I could, let's have a look at recruitment. I could straight away recruit, uh, there's a few units we can recruit here and get a horse regiment, um, a couple of Lancashire, well, uh, normal infantry or Lancashire regiment. I'm going to immediately get another, although it's quite expensive, I think I'll leave that for now. Um, and we'll go up to the north, so that's it decision wise, we're not going to move, I don't think we can move Charles actually at the moment, it looks like he's inactive, this little um, letter here, if it's kind of yellowed, it means they're inactive and we can't, we can give them orders, but they'll be kind of reduced in their um, effectiveness, and we can't give any offensive orders out, um, let's just see what other, other messages are, yeah, so royalists needs hot cities and win a battle to balance the war. And at the same time, in Scotland, Montrose should prevail and be able to bring the king some help from there. So we don't hold any cities, actually. We own, own some of these regions in Scotland at the minute. Let's have a look at Montrose's army. And I'm actually going to immediately put these into a group. And... I'm going to be, I haven't played this for um, quite a while really properly, so I can't remember how everything works, so if I am making any massive mistakes, leave me a comment and hopefully I'll get better. Um, but we're going to put all of Montrose's units into a group and that just helps with sort of keeping them, well, A, it reduces the command points needed for them. You can see it's now four and I have 12 available, I think it was 11 um, before, so it makes that a little bit better. And it also just means they're a little bit more resilient. So in battle, if we are uh, losing or if we, we get mauled, it's more likely to keep the units um, alive and in one piece. So first of all, we're going to try and take an Inverness. So there isn't a huge amount of Inverness. It's a city. It will give us some supply and construction capacity. There's a harbour there as well, but no industry or anything. But we need a kind of home base. And when winter comes, we'll need somewhere to sort of... Um, go into winter quarters and um, the enemy army here is on the bailey over here so we'll try and avoid them for the time being i can't see their strength for the moment but just looking at the uh the units there under bailey i think they will outnumber us or probably beat us i mean we could defend in the hills but i really need to take a city there to use as a home base um carlisle we can't do anything with the garrison at the moment and I think the only other unit we can move, apart from the one in Cornwall, is this one under Herbert. Um, we've got a garrison at Chester, so I'm actually going to immediately move over here and take Carnarvon back. Just because it's just kind of one one area behind us, and uh, it's obviously it's not giving us any supply. We can't move supply across it, so just with this small unit we'll do that. When this unit becomes active, we'll try and do the same with Pembroke. Try and take that. Um, try and get hold of Cardiff as well. Uh, and then this unit down here, it's currently already sieging. 
it looks like the garrison there, 41 power to our 118. But we'll just leave it besieged at the moment. I don't want to go into an assault straight away if we can avoid it. Um, but once that is taken, we'll try and link up with Goring with those forces there. Uh, in terms of the, yeah, so we're not going to recruit any new units, but in terms of production, you can see that the red number here is the uh, amount that we're missing from our currently active units. So we are under strength on a lot of our regiments and we have all the different kind of nationalities and areas, the force pools that this come under. And if you go through, you can see we're, we're in quite a bad way we're really up against it in terms of being able to supply and re-equip our troops but we will try and get these building back up so we've got five tons of war supplies at the moment we have one it's quite small but there is one replacement there already under our royalist line inventory uh, infantry and we've got five tons which will just get us a cavalry one so we'll order one of those and next turn that should help replenish some of our units you can see um scrolling through some of them are you can see here they're under strength and i'm actually going to i don't want to use all of our money doing this but i'm going to start forming some of these units into a group as well probably under rupert first of all because i might detach him off to do something else if uh the fairfax army doesn't attack us and pulls away We're currently in defensive um, stance and we'll stay in defensive stance. We are in Leicester. Let's move him into Leicester rather so he can take advantage of the uh, defenses there. And then, ah, so we can't group. Oh, it's because they're uh, the commanders are inactive, so we can't do a group at the moment. So let's move on. You can see here our national morale is 90. And if we have a look in the atlas here. Um, we don't have any decisions currently at the moment. I'm actually just going to save as well again because I do. I think it's compatibility with Windows 10. They do get quite a lot of crashes, so we'll just save. But we don't have any decisions in our foreign affairs or religious affairs at the moment. And if we look at the objectives, we can kind of see a bit of a detail on the enemy. So the Parliament uh, forces. This is combat power in relation to those. So we're at 100, uh, they're at 108. So our, their army isn't that much more um, powerful than us at the moment, but their navy obviously is a lot more. We don't have many ships. There's a couple down in the Bristol Channel and I think a couple possibly up in Lancaster. Yeah, there's a couple there. So we'll move on to the first turn and see what happens. Hopefully Fairfax doesn't come and attack us in Leicester straight away. So we're not really going to fight Naseby. We know what happens. The king was kind of soundly defeated and really led to the end of the war. It was just a case of mopping up after that. So uh, the new model army under Fairfax it has moved into Leicester and it is besieging us. We are okay on supply, I think, on these here. Yeah. So our supply is dropping down, but we're all right for now. And they'll hopefully move away once we start to threaten, really. Um, Taunton, we've already made a breach in the wall there. I'm just going to change his stance just to defend. It doesn't look any, like, like any reinforcements are coming, but I don't want him to retreat if he is attacked. And then we're going to move. Um, Bassett's force to join up with Goring or Goring and uh, we haven't made any breaches or anything in the walls of Plymouth so that siege is ongoing the force they're defending is quite powerful 390 we obviously overmatched them but I, again I don't want to kind of waste our forces in frontal assaults if we can avoid it um, Gerard here, he is unlocked now, but he's inactive with the yellow uh, envelope there. King's forces are now active, and we're going to form up. Uh, so the king is, but um, oh, I didn't mean to do that. 
that's removed by group. Um, King is, but Rupert isn't. Maurice is. Astley is. Isn't. Uh, Bella. What is that? Bella C. Um, I'm going to form up a group under Maurice, Prince Maurice. We'll put his own cavalry in there. And some of our cavalry units are Carnabies, Bonds, Dukes. And we'll put some infantry in there as well. Let's put some of our weaker infantry. So four regiments are foot. See our supplies are um, dropping already. We need to probably get out of Leicester. Hopefully get down to Oxford if we can. Again, uh, supplies will be my undoing in this. So let's have a look there. So uh, Prince Maurice has a 300 power group under him. Uh, we can't really. I really want to group up Rupert. So we'll save some of the rest. We could put a group under. Charles, but it's better to have, I think, it's better to have the uh, sort of lead general on his own with groups under him rather than him having groups himself. Uh, this unit hasn't got over to Carnarvon yet. Uh, we've had some parliamentary forces moved into Liverpool. So any small garrison there, they might take that fairly quickly. Probably will. Um, but we can't defend everywhere at once, so we'll just have to cope with that. So... Montrose has made it over to Inverness. Don't know where Bailey's gone. Um, we're currently besieging. And it looks like from our war supplies. Points away to orders. It looks like our. Yeah, we successfully broke the blockade there and um, the Bristol Channel. So we have got some extra supplies. Um, mustered a few garrisons there to defend against parliamentary troops. I think Wakefield as well. And that means we've got some additional supplies here. So what should we do with those? Just check our decisions first. Uh, we could build a wall at Herifold or Ashby. I think we, we've only got 12 engagement points. I think we're going to try and break the blockade again in the Bristol Channel. Try and bring some more supplies into Bristol. And we could recruit... How uh, much does this need? So this needs 10 war supply, but it's actually a double strength um, unit of parliamentary, um, royalist horse, rather. And this one, rather. That would be nice to have. We could get a new unit of horse, but again, I am so under strength on a lot of my units. Um, I think I'm going to just order some more replacements. So we'll do one of the cavalry again and then we're down to three so we'll save that for next term okay so we've got plus three war supplies at the moment so that is from Bristol, Hereford and Oxford I believe and if we can take Taunton that'll be four and then I think if we can get Lyme Regis yeah that has cloth industry which also brings in war supply so the infantry cost to get a replacement um, unit or chit is four for infantry and it's five for the normal cavalry it's four for militia and six for heavy cavalry and it's quite expensive again for the artillery I will focus on these two at the moment and we'll recruit some more units if we can if we get a surplus we take those additional things and check Charles so his forces are dropping in supply we have 38 in terms of money left but we're getting plus 57 each turn so I am going to try and recruit uh, I can't recruit a supply oh we're just slightly under that okay uh, I think that's it in terms of decisions and actions with what I can do at the moment in six days he'll take to get over there you're inactive I'm not gonna do anything with the fleet at the minute as well again there's not much points in terms of trying to beat Parliament's fleet we'll leave it as it is and then hopefully we can combine them and maybe pick off a few weak units later on but 
that's unlikely. So I'm hoping Fairfax will lift the Siege Blaster. He's going to start dropping supplies, hopefully. So let's move on to the next turn. Okay, so in Taunt, it looks like the... Okay, that's a bad uh, result. So <laughs> it looks like Colonel Colonel has tried to sally out from Taunton. We won the battle, but we did take more casualties and uh, we have some units that it looks like have been destroyed. Yes, okay. So we lost 1,800 men, no horse. They only lost 950 with some horse, but we did win the battle and they are still in Taunton. That will hurt their strength. It looks like Fairfax has moved away from uh, Leicester, which is good. Um, some parliamentary troops moving around. Some of their smaller units and garrisons have started to spread around the place. Okay, there's a unit in Oxford as well. Someone joined us in the southwest of Wales. So the turn is 15 days and it's um, simultaneous. So you do your orders, the AI does theirs, and then it plays out. So there's some parliamentary ships. Okay. There seems to be a, a lot arriving kind of in the northwest of England. I mean, they have a lot of units. But they are broken up. So we've got a detachment here under Leslie, which is quite strong. It's now besieging Lancaster. Um, Fairfax has moved up to Chester and is besieging there with a large force. But it looks like it has broken some units off. We have retaken Carnarvon, so we are actually going to move straight back to Denby and put those in defensive mode. Okay, so we're fine now in Leicester in terms of the enemy forces, but we are running out of supplies here, and I'm not sure what we can do about that, but let's just have a look around. So still besieging Plymouth, um, no breaches or anything in the walls there. Uh, Goring was attacked and did lose a few units, but fine on supply. And they weakened themselves there quite a lot. There's only 32 power in that unit, I think. Well, it's the six under there. Um, let's just cancel that move for a second. Uh, three, two, six. So that must be the garrison unit. Um, yeah, let's still move those over there. It's okay, days. I don't think they activated last turn. Um, let's form a group with Goring. Oh, I can't. He is also inactive, so I have to leave him as he is. Siege of Plymouth continuing. They are moving towards Bristol, it looks like. In terms of our supplies, so um, green is kind of anywhere where we do have supply, all that supplies can move through. Uh, well, it shows where they can pass through. We probably don't have enough supplies in this area for the King's Army and Oxford has a supply level of 13 but it's probably going to be pillaged by this Colonel's detachment here. So I think we probably would be best to try and get the King down to Worcester and then once Goring is finished with the Siege of Taunton, and we can hopefully meet up down here and combine our forces so let's see if we can do that so first of all he is active and if we go via warwick well we could go via warwick that keeps us away from fairfax up here i don't think he'd have time to march all the way down to warwick and catch up with us we should be able to slip past him so let's go warwick and then Worcester, our support in Worcester is really high as well. We've got 80 
80% support here and we can deal with our top force and while we're marching we'll be in defensive posture and we are going to kind of still want to avoid battle so if we encounter anyone we will defend and retreat and that siege continues we can't do anything about this force here uh, Gerard isn't active and I'm just going to save again and then up here in Scotland so still in the center Bailey we are still besieging Inverness and no change in the walls there in terms of decisions I think our decision let's have a look so yeah the um, attempt to break the blockade in Bristol Channel was unsuccessful on this occasion we've built our defensive works Oh, no, we didn't build our defensive works. I think that must be because a unit moved into the region. Uh, we've gained support in Bristol and parliamentarians have gained support in Yarmouth. Let's see what we can replace. So down to 120 on cavalry and 163 on the line inventory. If we... So we'll get three next turn. We'll get three next turn and we, if we spend here, yeah, so if we spend the four on the infantry, then we'll have two left and then we'll get three next turn and then we can spend that on the cavalry. In fact, we've already got one here in the cavalry that should get distributed. So we'll do the infantry, it leaves us with two. And I think that's pretty much all we can do at the moment. We've got um, a few sieges and things going on, but can't do a great deal at the moment. Hopefully we can get the king out and Worcester uh, as soon as his supplies disappear. We will just, in fact, he's already got no supply barely in the supply wagon, so he'll just be taken off the land so this, hopefully he can move straight through and make it to Worcester without any problems because we are going to start running into supply problems almost immediately and in fact I'm going to try and recruit a new supply wagon which we can't do <laughs> I think we can only do that in Oxford and Worcester both of which have an enemy unit there so we are stuck on that so hopefully our unit doesn't melt away. I've played this Naseby campaign before and ended up with King Charles's army down at like kind of 300 power and mostly to spy. I kind of got him stuck up here in Leicester and Newark and couldn't really extricate him from there. There just wasn't enough supply in these areas. I think they'd been recently pillaged. So uh, just save and then we'll move on and hopefully we're successful in one of our sieges and we can start moving our forces. Parliament ships moving around there. Okay, so we had a defeat at Plymouth. It looks like the garrison sullied and we lost 640 horse and they only lost 384 our cohesion we lost 243 as well we apparently lost a unit two and we'll probably retreat him from there i do need to group the rest of these units up as well so we can retain the units when we get defeated and not have them kind of melt away Parliament's moving their garrisons all over the place. I haven't seen what's happened. Okay, so Charles is moving. But it doesn't look like he's made it into Warwickshire. Uh, another defeat at the Wars of Exeter. Looks like they sallied again. Lost some more, some more men. Two hundred to fifty-one.
Plymouth. There's not a huge amount at Plymouth, but it's the kind of only parliamentary garrison kind of in Cornwall and uh, well, on the border of Cornwall and, and Devon. And then if we can get rid of that, we can kind of consolidate our force. Okay, so Charles did move into Warwickshire and has started a siege there, but we'll get him to move straight on to Worcester. So Chester's in some trouble here. Looks like the parliamentary army is still consolidating there. Okay. So let's see what happened with Charles first of all. Okay, yep, that's great. He made it to Worcester. And supply level there is eight. But it can draw supply. Again, I'm not great with how the supply works in this game. But I think now he's in a friendly tile. As long as it's not under siege. I'll put him in Worcester. But let's do that now. Um... I believe it can draw supply from the friendly units adjacent, so these two and supply can move through from other areas. He's still got 27, um, so the current stock is 103, we're using more than that per turn. And let's see the supply wagons, yeah they're fully out, so we'll have to, have to see how that goes next turn. Is in Worcester anyway, and is there a depot there? No, there's no depot, so let's immediately build a depot. Start building the depot. And that should help us with supplies, I believe. Um, okay, so Grenville's force has retreated from Plymouth all the way up to Taunton, and he's in passive, he's resting at the moment. He's been badly, badly mauled there. Barely got any troops left. We might just combine him during. Hmm. Okay, oh, we're going to form a group under Goring anyway, so. Okay, we'll give him. We'll give him most of the horse. And then. The stronger. Infantry regiments. Uh, we'll Talbots, Courtney's, Bassett, Davies, Shelley, and then we'll give him the artillery. We can get a couple more, so we'll give him Maurice, Pollard, String Trees. Ah, okay, we just hit the limit. Okay, so he's got about 438 combat power, and then we can't combine into he comp four he's not active so we can't com make a group out of those he is not active so we kind of failed down at Plymouth quite a bad defeat there and he's run away we will move him we can't move him oh we can move him to so we'll try and get him into Exeter and rest up there okay our force under Gerard is still inactive here so we can't do anything with that we've got some more parliamentary in Parliamentarians in Middle of Wales as well. They've probably come through from uh, West Street, so we'll, we're still going to move him back to Denby and then we'll move down here and take that fort. Garrison's at Leicester. Uh, we're under siege at Newark. We've got a garrison there. And under siege at Lancaster, Carlisle. Let's have a look in Scotland. So here is Bailey. In the Highlands, we still haven't taken Inverness. They have got some two garrison units there. And we haven't reached any of the walls. We don't have any cannon, I think, on him. No. Nope. Okay, so we'll leave him up there besieging. The main thing is, well, we actually took Warwick on the way through as well. So what's that got there? A requisition office which gives us some money and I think we should hopefully have well we have the money let's see if we can recruit a supply wagon can and we could get some horse but all we need the supplies um, so we're gonna recruit another supply wagon in Worcester we'll join that onto the King's army and then in terms of our decisions We'll also build defensive works in Worcester. I think that should be okay with him there. Again, 
some of these bits I might be getting wrong. So parliamentarians captured Liverpool, but we gained Warwick and we lost control of Montgomery, which is up here somewhere, I think. Oh no, will it be in Wales? Yeah, sorry, mid, mid Wales. Okay. Uh, and we will replenish some of our horse. Um, oh, I've spent the money on the supply wagon. That's fine. We'll keep that for next turn. Okay, um, let's go on to the next turn. Someone's plundered Weymouth. Our garrison at Basing House is out of supply. Uh, there's not a lot we can do about that. The countryside's been pillaged. In fact, Worcester's been pillaged as well. Yeah, um, not a lot we can do about that. Basing House in Winchester is kind of totally isolated. It's going to take a bit to get through to them if we can. So we've had our first setback, really. It's good that we got the king out, but Plymouth would have been nice to take when we could have moved east. But let's move on to the next turn and see what happens. Okay, got a battle here at Taunton. Looks like they sallied out. This one actually went better for us. We inflicted 41 casualties and they lost 40 horse. And let's see, didn't capture any equipment or take any prisoners. So that's fine. That looked like they didn't go real often. We've had a defeat in um, Brooknote um, and we actually inflicted more casualties. But it looks like we'll probably fall back there. Still building up their forces in Cheshire. Um, no breaches in the walls yet. I think Chester, I think, didn't fall until very late on in the war. It might have actually been after the king had been captured. I can't, I can't really remember, but it was um, a stronghold until right in the end, I think. Okay, we've got some more parliamentarians arriving, parliamentarians arriving in Worcester, some more on the south coast, and they've got to force their through to Pembroke. Uh, Fairfax has actually left Chester now and is moving back south. He's obviously realised he's let Charles slip away. So he's in Litchfield. Okay, so we'll just have a quick look around and then we will leave it there for the episode. Uh, like I said, this is just kind of an old game that I haven't played for quite a while. Just fancied a, uh, doing a Let's Play on it. Didn't think there was that many on YouTube. I'm not sure how popular the game was when it came out, but it's um, it's a period of history I've just started to kind of get back into. Not really well, well covered, so um, just a quick review and then more in the episode. So we've got Grenville's Force moving back down to Exeter. He didn't make it this turn. We actually took Taunton in those battles, so we've now got we should receive yet. We've got plus four, plus four war supplies coming in, which will help us when we need to replenish our forces. Um, we lost that battle in Pembrokeshire, and yeah, Gerald's force has moved back off to Cardiff, retreated there. So we've actually lost control of quite a big swathe of Wales here, or mid, mid Wales. Our king's forces are in Worcester, and he is now nearly totally out of supply, actually. Okay, so the new baggage train that we trained isn't completely formed yet but we'll, we'll combine them and then that moves us up to 27%.
So I think we might split his force up and march them south to join Goring and try and take Gloucester. Try and stay away from the new model army there as well, but that will help with supplies, just breaking up the force slightly. And they left Chester, um, still besieging Lancaster. Uh, left Carlisle, so the siege has been broken there. And we are still besieging up here in Inverness, but it doesn't look like Bailey is moving to intercept us or come and raise the siege. So that looks okay. And then we're isolated down in Basinghouse. So mixed bag, we've we've kind of lost a few territories here. Lost the siege of Plymouth, had to withdraw, but quite a good result there in that we got the king out of the Midlands, took Warwick, took Taunton, and have not lost anywhere really that supplies us with our war supplies that we need to hopefully build our forces up enough to defeat the the new metal army so great thank you for watching i'll probably i probably won't be able to win as the royalist but i'll play this for as long as it kind of makes sense to and uh, yeah subscribe for more episodes if you liked it thank you very much for watching